My name is Austin, and I have leukemia. We were trick-or-treating around a suburb of uh, Philadelphia, and uh, while we were out, I got the phone call from the doctor, and that was when um, she said, it worked. He has no more cancer left. And I just started crying, and you know, I was wanting to shout to everybody that, you know, he's cancer free. He doesn't have cancer anymore. And, um, you know, he was more concerned about getting candy and um, being a kid. And that's all we've ever wanted is just for him to be a normal kid. My son, Austin, was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. He was a typical, healthy, normal three-year-old. He hadn't shown any signs and symptoms. I would like to think that I would have known. I'm a nurse and an oncology nurse for adults. It came out of nowhere. Um, he literally, overnight, um, had lymph nodes that popped out of the side of his neck. And that's what brought us in. And kind of started the cascade of, of diagnosis. I took him into his pediatrician. He was running around the pediatrician's office, um, you know, just normal three-year-old energy. I literally looked at his pediatrician and I said, could he have cancer? And his pediatrician looked at me and said, kids that look this good don't have cancer. Nothing had come back abnormal with his blood work. It wasn't until the following day they took us into a room, my husband and I, and that was the first time that we had heard that we think that your son has leukemia. Our world just stopped. I first met Austin when he was five years old. He, at that time, at a young age, had already been dealing with leukemia for a while, for much of his young life. He was diagnosed at a, at a young age with a type of leukemia that is often very curable, but he had a particular type that is higher risk for relapse. So he started standard therapy that works for many patients and got into remission and was doing well for a while. And then he relapsed and he relapsed pretty early on. It's almost worse being told the second time that your kid has cancer. At that point, because he relapsed while he was still on chemotherapy, our only option at that point was for him to have a bone marrow transplant. So we had to rely on a stranger um, to help save his life. And he went on to a bone marrow transplant, which is standard for a patient who has a high-risk relapse like Austin did. It was a Saturday and I was home with him. My husband had come home um, from work. He had gotten a call from our physician, from Austin's doctor, um, and had the results of his bone marrow biopsy. Um, and he had come down the stairs, um, he was crying, and he basically got out that um, we had gotten the news that his cancer was back again. He relapsed very early after a bone marrow transplant which is extremely high risk for a patient in that situation. There are often really no options for other therapies, uh, especially when you relapse that early after bone marrow transplant. And by this time, you know, our situation had gone from, you know, bad to really bad, and now our situation, this was grave. We, you know, signed consents and basically um, we're told that, you know, this is still a phase one clinical trial, um, that not many kids have been treated, and that they made it clear that, you know, this is not necessarily a cure. Um, but at that point, 
we were out of options, and this was our only option in order to try and save his life. CAR T-cell therapy is a type of immune therapy where we use a patient's own immune system and change it in a way so that it's able to recognize the patient's cancer. What we do is we take a particular part of the immune system, a T cell, which is very good at killing cells in the body that shouldn't be there. But they are not able to recognize the cancer cells until we change them in a way so that they can recognize the cancer cells. We take those T cells and we reprogram them or engineer them and make them recognize something on the cancer cell that they can then stick to and be able to kill off that cancer cell. So what happens is after we have manufactured the T-cells and we're able to give them back to the patient, they're then infused in the patient and they're able to go everywhere in the body and find the cancer cell and they can stick to that cancer cell and kill it. And they then can multiply many times over and continue to go all throughout the body potentially last for many months or even years. And so the hope is that they're able to continue to live in the body and be able to hunt down if there's any remaining blood cancer cells that they can then kill off later on. Much like transplant, um, it's a quick infusion, uh, push into his port, and uh, then basically you wait. We were hoping, obviously, that the T cells were multiplying by the millions and going and seeking out and killing, you know, the cancer that was left over um, that he had, you know, after transplant. Um, and we just waited for what they told us would be a storm. Um, they call it the storm, and basically waiting for him to have these side effects and get sick. And at that point, um, we would go into the hospital and, you know, they would monitor him because the kids can get pretty sick when they get this, these T cells. It was about six days later, then he just started not feeling himself, not, you know, as energetic. Um, he was more tired. And the main thing that brought us into the hospital, um, he had low-grade fevers, and he had excruciating headaches. There's a, usually a four- to six-week window after they receive the therapy before we know whether it has worked and whether it has gotten them into remission. I refer to it as, as he is, he's a miracle. He's absolutely 100% a miracle. I wouldn't say that I never worry because for me, you know, he never presented as the typical leukemic kid. And so when he gets normal routine colds and, and different illnesses, when you're a cancer mom, it can mean something completely different. And there's all sorts of things that race through your mind. The time that has progressed, that's encouraging. It's too early to know if this will be a cure for many patients or some patients. However, we are hopeful because there are many patients who remain in remission for several years after receiving this therapy, raising the hope and the possibility that this may potentially be a cure for some patients. We're very thankful, obviously, that we've been able to be in this trial um, and that he's done as well as he has. You know, we're very thankful that we have days like, you know, today or you know, being able to travel and being able to celebrate birthdays and holidays and, you know, those things are, are, mean so much more now than they did prior to cancer entering our lives.